just look at it as it is uh, on the screen. I love to sing it a lot. And the way I sing it is this. Just look at it as in the screen. And just don't mind the language I'm using. I pa de wa yi o je ayo ko kan wa ba bo lo wo ese a o si ja ba pe lu jesu ni le aye ra ye i pa de wa yi o je ayo ko kan wa ba bo lo wo All I've just sung, all I've sung is that song. Can you just imagine what that day will be? If we are opportuned to be gathered with Christ. We, for those that uh, listen to Gospel Watch, on uh, Nigeria FM yesterday, who we are talking about the second coming of Christ. And something struck me. You look at, we were looking at the second coming. We, and then we look at the confusion which people have about the second coming. And we now broke it down to stages. Thank you, Daddy. <laughs> That's how you know a professional preacher. We spoke about what will happen to believers. Every one of us that believe in Jesus Christ. And it was quite shocking. And it was actually shook, it shook me. When I realized that uh, the second coming of Christ is actually broken into two. One of it is the one we call rapture. It is not everybody that believes in Jesus Christ that will be raptured. After rapture, there will be what we call tribulation. And uh, if I daddy put it in a better way, at that time, it's no more about grace. Now, it is grace that saves you. You and me. It is not what we do. But after rapture, when the, during the tribulation, there will be some Christians who their works that did not allow them to be raptured. And they will have to fight out during that tribulation. At that time, it has to be their own effort. When that period of tribulation will be ended by second coming of Christ. To, to, to finally deal with devil and his host in the battle of Armageddon. So, anytime I remember this song, and we shall gather, Savior with thee in our eternal home. You know, in Sunday school this morning, they were talking about 1,000 years. It is after tribulation, after the second coming, then you have the millennium on this planet earth where God will reign. At that time, Satan will be banned. And then you will now talk of the new heaven and the new heart. I think it's a food for thought for all of us. In fact, if we don't do any preaching today, I think just looking at this song, to ask yourself, for me to ask myself, will I be gathered with Jesus Christ? Father of all glory, we thank you. We give you praise because you are a good God. You are a God that never fell. You are a God of all flesh, of all glory. You have everything in your hand. You created heaven. You created heart. You created us for a purpose. You said the Son of Man came to give life. And give it in abundance. You say, but the Satan came to kill, 
to steal and to destroy. Lord, we thank you because you have counted us worthy among those that will be gathered unto you in the last days. I set our thanks and praises in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, we have come to seek your face today and we believe that your spirit has come down among us. Right now, Lord, this is the hour. Let your glory show. Amen. 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 Glorify yourself. Amen. Glorify yourself. Amen. I'm nothing. You are everything. The boldness to speak to your word, grant it to me. Amen. Stretch forth your hand. Amen. And let your word heal your people. Amen. Come down, Lord. Amen. Perform miracles. Amen. And wonders. Amen. By the power of your word. Amen. Thank you, Jehovah. Amen. Thank you, everlasting God. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Shall be seated. We are in our season, in our year of divine abundance. Last week, we were taught to prepare for good sources. We were taught of steps we need to take to make this year a good success. We were told to evaluate. We were told to set goals. We were told to discipline ourselves. We were admonished to walk with the wise. We were told to have courage we were reminded of uh, what God told Joshua. That do not let this word of mine depart from your heart. Meditate on it day and night. We were taught to be bold and be of good courage. We were taught to have a prayer altar. We actually going to look as we go in this year of divine abundance. I just want to quickly make us look at the test you you and me are going to face on our route. To divine abundance. That is, the French will call it your test, en route, divine abundance. That is, of your, of your testing, of testing on your route to divine abundance. In, in, in essence, it means. Divine abundance is not going to come without testing. It's not just going to come. What is a test? You know when you go to when you go to well, for for students and even for all of us all of us have been to school before and some of us are still in school. Everybody can claim to be studying what is taught in school. Everybody can be claim can be claiming that they don't sleep, that they are studious. But there's an adage that says the taste of the pudding 
is in the eating. And that is why a test will demonstrate what you know and what you do not know. And that is why in the examination, they will distribute papers. They will distribute the same exam. They will do the same exam test. And when the result comes, depending on what individual candidates know, and uh, if you went to school in the part of the world where I went to school in our days, they have what we call A1, A2, A3, then they now go to C4, C5, C6. And then they have, C, they have P7, P8, and F9. Where you call, what will happen to you, just like in this country, they have A star, they have A, they have B, they have C, they have D, they have E, F, they even have U. That is, you cannot even be this one ungraded. That is, the paper is not worth looking at. And the only thing that will determine where different students fall into is looking at their paper. What are they put down that they know? What are the things they didn't put down because they didn't know it? That is what you call a test. And uh, I actually remember one way or the other when I do, did my school start. I was, initially I was going to study dentistry. And uh, my university, the university I chose there was University of Benin, for those who come from the same country as me. But one way or the other, during my exam, certain things happened. I wasn't well. And I remember they advised me not to go for my chemistry exam, but I said, I have to go. But when the result came back, I had, there are only two, two papers I didn't get good grades in. One of them was chemistry. The other one was Yoruba. I had P7 in Yoruba and chemistry. I, but of course, before we did our school start exam, we have already sat for jam. That is the examination you need for you to get, get to university. So when the jam result came, I did so well. My name was, came out as the students that will study in University of Benin. But you know that there, is a, there, is a, there, is, there are some standards before you can now say, of course you have passed jam. But there's another hurdle you have to cross before they will allow you to come in. And I remember going to University of Benin. At, uh, for those who know Benin, uh, the Ugoa campus. And the people who are there, you have to submit. You know, when, even in this country, students, you know, when you are going to uni, they won't just, they won't just say because you said you have A, B, C, and just allow you to start lecture. You have to show your result. And I remember getting to Benin, I showed my result. And they look at it, uh, physics, yes, math, yes, uh, biology, yes. And then when they get to chemistry, they put cross. Because to turn the dentistry, you need to pass to credit level. Which means, as far as the standard is concerned, to study chemistry, to study dentistry, the test had shown that I'm not qualified. And uh, in anything in life, it is the test that will show how good you are, how much you know, and how fit you are to occupy certain positions, even in the kingdom. And there is no way we can go through life. There is no way we can go through 
our journey to define abundance without encountering test along the way. We're going to be tested at each stage of this year. I don't know what goal you have set for yourself. But for you to move from one level to another, you will have to pass a test. Because at the end of the year, different companies, different people, they will be publishing their result. And I don't know if you, if, if you are one of the people like me that like to read news or to like to listen to news. You will know one news came in the past, in the, in the last two weeks. Sainsbury and Tesco. Sainsbury came out about 10 days ago and said, like for like, our, our sales grow by 2%. Come Tesco last week. Tesco said, Tesco came out with their own result. And they said, their growth, like for like, compared to last year, dropped by 2%. And they said for the first time in 20 years. So something has happened to both of them. One has passed the test of the Hostile economic situation. The other one, the other one has failed. There is no way there is no way that you will get that growth without test. And uh, let me tell you something, like many of us try to do with God. We think uh, God is a gambler. Gambler, you know, you just drop it and it will come out. God is not a gambler. You can't cheat. You can't cheat your way in. You have to be tested. You have to be tested. And it is the result in December will make a differentiation among those who are willing to be tested and those who are not willing to be tested. If you cheat, it will, you will be found out. You know, like I always say, some of the things, you know, when we are praying for divine abundance, some of the things all of us are hoping for is that some... God will do some miracle. And some of the miracles will come in form of test. One of the reasons why you have to be tested is for God to know whether you will be able to, whether you are capable to undo the result when the miracle comes. A lot of us, you want to be on top, you want to get to position of manager. But are you willing to be trained? Are you willing to be tested? Are you willing to go through the test that requires to be a manager? I'm going to tell you various tests that you're going to encounter in this year of divine abundance for it to come. To reality. Let me ask you a question. How many people want to be on top this year? Oh. Nobody is, nobody is excluded. Everybody wants to be on top. My next question is, how many people are willing to be tested this year? Oh. Okay, at least two babas. Two babas choose to. Uh, yes. No, it will. Don't think some people are pretending. 
A lot of people do not raise up their hand, and that is fine. But I can tell you, unless you pass test, I told you when I didn't pass my chemistry. They stopped me from stopping dentistry. I, which means I could not get crash. I had to stay another year to go and retake my O-level exam. And by do you know what? I remember my dad of blessed memory. When I came back from Benin, he said, what happened? I said, I didn't have a, I had P7 in chemistry. And I said, he said, and so what? I said, it doesn't qualify me to, to study dentistry. And then he now asked me, he said, which one is dentistry? I said, the doctors of uh, teeth. Uh, you, children here, you won't understand what I'm saying, because here, dentists are rich. But back home, dentists are poor. <laughs> uh, and my dad asked me, ah, if you want to be a doctor, why not be a proper doctor? <laughs> he said he, did, he never realized there are doctors who only do teeth. He said, who cares about teeth? <laughs> Therefore, when God brings tests to you, when God brings trial to you, you don't know what it is for. It is at that minute where my dad was talking to me. That is what changed my course from dentistry to medicine. So when God brings trial to you, and some people have said they don't want trials. They don't want tests. But whether you want it or not, for those who are looking for divine abundance, one of the tests you will be tested in is what I call this test of small things. The test of what? The test of... Let's open to our, our Bible to Luke. Luke 16. Media can I have NIV. I've got um, Luke 16. It's a story we know very well. Let's quickly read a fast reader. 16. Luke. Luke chapter 16. From verse 1. Yes. There was a certain rich man. Yes. I want you to listen very well. Yes. Yes. So he called him and said to him, mm -hmm. What is this I hear about you? Yes. Give an account of your stewardship, for you can no longer be steward. I want you to look at what the NIV says. Of course, he said, Give an account of your management, because you cannot be manager any longer. In essence, he's asking him to prepare the handover notes for the person that will succeed him. Prepare your and over notes. Yes, carry on. Then the two are said within himself. Yes. What shall I do? Yes. For my master is taking the stewardship away from me. Mm -hmm. I cannot be. Yes. I am ashamed to bear. Yeah. I have decided what to do. Mm -hmm. That when I am put out of the stewardship, mm -hmm. they may receive me into their houses. Mm -hmm. Yeah, carry on. So he called every one of, the, of his master's directors to mm -hmm. him. And said to the first, mm -hmm. How much do you owe my master? Yes. I want you to pay attention to that. The master commended who? The unjust steward. Yes. Because he had dealt shrewdly. Yes. The son, son of, his, of this world are more shrewd in their generation than the son of life. Yes, and Jesus wants to bring out something. Carry on. This, and I said to you, this, look at what Jesus said here. Make pray for yourself. Mm -hmm. My righteous man. Mm hmm. 
That's all. Can you hear what Jesus says? He who is faithful in very small things will be faith will be will be what? Ah. Sit down now. If you go back, a manager who wants to who wants to sack somebody. Give handover. He called his debtors. People who owes him 80, 100, he's putting in the record, legal record, that even though you owe my master 100, I'm going to write down 60. Even though you owe my, my... And the thing that struck me is that they said the manager, the owner commended the dishonest Steward, don't you ask yourself why? And what Jesus, why, why is Jesus saying, this man is faithful in little things? It is because you will be thinking that why will he change something that is 100 to 80? Why did he change 2,000 to 1,000? It is as a lot of us, when you go to us for circles or West Feed or no, no. You see sales, 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 sales. You think those shops, are they going to close down after those sales? Do you think they lose? Why do you think they haven't lost? It is because even though the debt on the debt, on the debt sheet, it shows that these people owe 2,000, that they owe 500. But the manager who knows the in and out of that trade knows that many of the 2,000, number one, as a manager, he has the legal right. He has the, what you call the... Next time you go to shop, you see many of us are not... You see, if you know your Bible very well, you will inherit this heart. Next time you go to a shop and, they, and you ask, how much does this cost? And they tell you it is, a, it is 80 pounds. If you look at, there are no many, many customers coming in after an hour. Ask for the manager. And say, manager, I've got cash. You call it, your, all your stewards, they say it is 60 pounds. It is 80 pounds. Try it. Try it in this, this country. But I've got 60 pounds cash, not credit card. And see whether the manager will take it or not. That is what we call manager's discretion. That is the first thing. The second thing is that a lot of it has got to do with interest that was put on that debt. Which a manager also has a right. In fact, he knows that if he removes that, one of the trainings is that if he removes that interest, people are likely to, to pay their debt. And the third thing is that probably this manager is paid on commission. That is, if he sells something for 60 pounds, 10 pounds out of it will belong to him. So the, the owner knows that three things have happened here. Number one, this manager is brilliant. People, he has done a way that these people are going to pay my money back. That's number one. Number two is that this man is also not only generous, but he has wisdom. How many people did he call? Those, he called many people. The one the Bible recorded are just three examples. Which means he was doing what that the wisest man that lived in this heart, Solomon, what he described. In Ecclesiastes 11. Let's quickly see Ecclesiastes 11, 1 and 2. When he was saying, spread your bread over water. Give to seven. Give to eight. Are we there? Look at what the wisest man in the Bible is saying. He said, cast your bread upon the waters. 
For after many days, you will find it again. What does verse 2 say? Give fortunes to seven, even to eight. Yes, to eight. For you do not know what disaster may come upon the land. Why do you think that those three people who thought they have debt of 2,000 and the manager is telling them, I'm going to record 1,000 for you. You only pay 1,000. If they see that person two, three or three months later suffering, what do you think they will do for him? Would they show pity on him or not? Ah. Would they show pity on him or not? If you think you owe 2,000 and all of a sudden somebody said pay 1,000, how will you see that person later in life? You will call him a good man. You will be ready to do anything for that person. That is what Solomon is saying here. He said, give, spread it over water. Water might have taken it away, but you will find it one day. So one of the tests you are going to see, what Jesus is saying here, in your, in your route, on your route this year, in your journey this year, to divine abundance, you must be prepared to pass this test of, of small and little things. If you don't pass it, don't expect big things to happen. Divine abundance is found in the word of God. Jesus is citing it here that it is those who are faithful. You think, uh, after all, the church is eating for you. Uh, come on Monday, come on Wednesday, come on Friday. You know they all look little. But I can tell you, this one, ah, I can't give this. I can't give that. I can't give this. You see, all these little, little selfishness, they all come together to be a body that will stop you from getting to your divine abundance. And I pray none of us will fail this test in Jesus' name. Amen. And then there's what we call the motive test. Ask yourself, anything I'm going to do this year on my route, in my journey to divine abundance, what is going to motivate me? Am I going to be coming to church so that Pastor Bandele, the chairman, can like me? Am I going to behave like the Pharisees? What did they, how did Jesus describe the Pharisees? What did they say they do in the church? Ah, uh -uh, there are Bible people here. Yeah? Okay, let's open to Matthew. If we don't know it. Let's open to Matthew. Chapter 6, verse 5. And when they do what? And when you pray, do not be like what? Do not be like the hypocrites. For they love to pray, standing in the synagogues and on the streets, corner, to be seen by men. I tell you the truth. They have received that. In your journey to divine abundance this year, anything you do, be it at work, be it in church, be it at home, please. Let your motive be the heart of God. Be motivated by God. You have to pass the test of motive. And then, number three test you have to pass is the test of stewardship. You know, a lot of us, all we want to do is we want to take. We are good at taking. We are not good at giving. Abraham was entertaining God. When he, got, when he told his wife, go and make food for these strangers, the wife had passed the test of stewardship. They didn't know they were entertaining God. If you don't open, can I look at me? If you give me something now, where will you stay? Because your hand has to be open. 
It is, it is because my hand is open now. That is, be, that is when I can take. What did, what did the, the Gospel of Luke say? Give. And it shall be what? <laughs> Do you know a lot of us, we have become, we have become a reservoir. You know what a reservoir is? You know, in Nigeria, there's no water, water corporation, doesn't, they don't function again. So every house, you see what? Reservoir. Do they move? That's what most of us have become. And we want abundance. We want posterity. When we have heard many times that give, it shall be given unto you. That a little measure, shaking, good measure, shaking, we have had it many times. For you to, to be successful in this road of 2012, of divine abundance, can I enjoy you to be a river? Don't be a reservoir. What does, why, how do you divide something as a river? What does river do? It flows. Be a river, don't be a reservoir. And that is when the blessing of God the divine blessing of God, that is when it can flow through you. You know, some people will be Christian and they will forever remain poor. Because God knows that even if he gives them riches, it will forever stay with them. It will never flow. On your road to abundance this year, be a, reserv- be a river. Don't be a reservoir. There's no, I've never known where how greed pays if you are greedy. All you want to do is grab, 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 grab. Ah, may we not grab to hell? Ah, people didn't say amen to that. You have to pass the test of wilderness. You have to pass the test of wilderness. It because you won't say, ah, because I'm praying, I'm praying, I'm praying, I'm praying. Witherness will come. Witherness must surely come. There will be, our fathers in the Lord will tell you, sometimes you will feel low. Even spiritually, you are not able to. But it is a test you have to pass. You have to pass that test of witherness. That when things are not going the way you plan it, that you are able to concentrate on your vision. You have to pass that test of wilderness. Let's quickly open to Deuteronomy 8. Deuteronomy 8. Let's read from verse, verse uh, 18. No, start from 15. 15. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. 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 There was no water. Mm-hmm. Who fed you in the way, mm-hmm. in the wilderness, mm-hmm. with manna, mm-hmm. which your father mm-hmm. did not know? Yes. And did not humble you. Yes. And, and I want you to listen to do. He did all this. Yes. And that he may test you. That he may test you. To do you good. God, do you know? Do you know that uh, if you look at Egypt to. Egypt to uh, Canaan land, the promised land, which is where our land is this year, which is where your land is this year in the name of Jesus. Divine abundance. But 
God deliberately put them through this test of wilderness. If you look at it geographically, Canaan to Egypt is only a very short distance. But God deliberately took them through a route of difficulty. And there are many people, one of the reasons what that many people don't know is that if you look at the geography of Israel and Egypt, Canaan land and Egypt, these people are, they were residing in Egypt. God wants to take them to promised land, where it took Canaan. Before, some people were already occupying that Canaan land. And if you, if you remember your primary school religion very well, you remember the, how we used to call the Philistines. How did we used to describe them? Even when the spies, they are giants. And because of that, the Philistines, who were occupying the promised land before that, they were so close to Egypt. And Egypt did something to protect themselves. They built, they have fortified the route between Canaan and Egypt. If God had allowed his children to go through that route, he knew that they might meet a battle on the road which they were not prepared for yet. Sometimes, your divine abundance, you may be praying from January, like, uh, like uh, uh, the, the, the minister of God said, it may be July before you see result. And God may deliberately take you through that route. Because if he makes it much, you may not be prepared for what he's going to give you. So you have to pass through that wilderness. You have to pass the wilderness test. You have to pass the wilderness test. You can't say, the Bible said, the plural Isaiah, is it Isaiah 40? 30, is it 40, 30? That those who wait on the Lord, they shall be what? And they shall be what? They will be strong. It will renew their strength. They will walk. They shall run. So you have to be prepared to pass the wilderness test. How many tests so far? Right. If you are writing down, raise up your hand. Okay. You are not writing down. How many people are going to buy the tape? Okay. You know the reason why I say so, sir? You have come? Let me tell you something. Even when you, when you know you have problem, and I give you a practical one now, we know this from evidence. And you go to a doctor. One of the things we know, sir, is that if somebody comes to us and they sit down, you know he has problems, that's why he comes. We know that if we are telling him, this is what, we, you know the problem you bring, these are the solutions. One of the things we know is that out of the ten, we told him, before he leaves that room, he's going to forget four. He's going to remember only four. We know that from evidence. And by the time he gets home, that four would have reduced to three. You are not writing down. You are not going to buy the tape. And then you are going to say, ah, God, this God goes home bad drag. It's not that you'll be here on Wednesday or Friday. So tell me, Please, I enjoy you. One of the things you have to you have to imbibe this year on your journey to divine abundance. You must be ready to invest. The discs are there. They say two fifty or three fifty. We all buy uh, all sorts of films, and we buy newspaper, and we eat McDonald's. You have to pass the test of credibility. Sir, if on our journey to, abund to divine abundance, you have to pass credibility test. You want, you see, what, what people don't know is that you think you are, you are just, that that place you are going, that you are just a clerk. 
that after all, I'm just a receptionist. That after all, I'm just this. After all, I'm just a cleaner. After all, I'm just that. I want you to remember Joseph. You remember Joseph? Joseph, that Joseph, the son of Jacob. You remember your Bible in uh, Genesis 39? He, he had a dream, as we all had, have a vision for our divine abundance. Yeah? But in that journey, he became a slave. As a slave, ah, what, uh, what, uh, what joy will it be for, you, for a slave, the wife of his master, is saying, come and, come and do. Come and do. That for him to be located to where his abundance is, he had to pass credibility test. Because for him to get to prison, the womb, he said, how can I do this? And sin against who? Against God. How can I do this? And sin against God. And because he didn't do, he said, come and do, I'm not doing he was lied against. It means, as part of your credibility test, on your route, and route to your divine abundance, people are going to speak lie against you. But you still have to pass the credit. You must be prepared to, to take the consequence of people lying against you. Knowing fully well that you did it because of God. And if God says it, he said, tell the righteous. It shall be what? He said, tell the righteous. He said, the following, the following blessing in Deuteronomy 28 shall follow those who are to my voice. Which means, Joseph passed the credibility test. Daniel, before he became prime minister, you know, sir, who, who, who told you, I, you don't know his ignorance. Why you think you can't become anything in this country? That guy now, the shadow business secretary, where is he from? The, bas, the shadow business secretary, where is he from? Ah, people don't know. You have to know things. You don't know Bible, you don't know current affairs. You have to know things now. Ah. Bible, you don't know. Current affairs, you don't know. Something has to inspire you, sir. Something has to inspire you. He's from Nigeria. The current business shadow secretary. He, do you know where he grew up? The day you say because I'm living in Acne. Or because I'm living... He grew up in, in Bristol. In, in Stratham there. Which means... You, you may say he's a shadow business secretary. Even now he's moved. As when you are a shadow minister, you have your own, you, they have so many money that comes to that office. You have your own staff. The same staff that the real business secretary have. Because they expect you that you may take over his position in the next day. They, you, you have the same staff. So, don't tell me you are in a foreign land. A somebody like you also Adi is doo-doo like you. Black like you. African like you. Even if you now want to microscopic it. Nigerian like you. Adi, Lami. Lami is from West Indies. Who is the MP for this area? Eh. Thank God. It is, it is about pass, passing credibility test. And I remember when they want to describe Lamy, when anytime they want to interview him, they will say, Christian MP. 
That's the way they usually describe him. A Christian, M Christian MP. You have to pass the credibility test. Another test you have to pass is the warfare test. What do I call it? Ah, please call it again. You have to pass warfare test, oh. You know, a lot of us, we claim to be strong in faith. But we are weak when it comes to fighting. To fight. We are weak. We are strong in faith. But uh, my Bible described to me in Paul, in Ephesians, Ephesians, the one we quote a lot, 6 10. He said, Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. But what did he say you should put on? Put on the whole armor of God. What do you use armor for? That you may be able to stand against the wild of the devil. Yes, read it. Yes, carry on. And we do not wrestle against flesh. Yes. And blood. Yes. But against principality. Yes. Against powers. Against the rulers of the darkness of this age. Against spirits and foes of wickedness in the heavenly places. Yeah, that's enough. You go and let people go and, let go and read it when you get home. Which means, you say you have faith. But as a Christian, one of the tests you have to pass is test of warfare. I'm not saying you have to be insensitive. I'm not saying you have to be, ab to be abruptive or, or abrasive. But the reality is that if truly your destiny this year is divine abundance. If it is worth pursuing, it is worth fighting for. If you have the vision that is worth pursuing, it is worth fighting for. <laughs> you want to hear the truth? The truth is that you need to toughen yourself up that's why sometimes when we say shout, cry unto the Lord, cry unto the Lord, release yourself. You have to talk about because the reality as you had in that uh, post letter to the Ephesian is that this world is not a bed of roses. This world is a battlefield. It is a battlefield. That's the reality. It's a battlefield. Each day of your life this year, you must engage the enemy each day when you leave home, knowing that you are going to face obstacles. Don't forget, where is your journey taking you to? Divine world. Divine abundance. And on that journey every day of this year, when you leave your house, be prepared that each day, prepare yourself that you are going to engage enemy. In serious battle. And how do you do it? I like uh, that's why I like the Bible. In uh, is it first Corinthians chapter 10? He said, We do not war as the world was. He said, Our weapon of warfare, they are not war. But what? In who? In mighty in what? To the pulling down of all strong and anything that raises itself up against the knowledge of God. You must it's a battlefield. It's a battlefield. Oh John no you people don't even want you, you are complaining that my breakfast is not enough. It didn't it didn't fill my stomach. People don't even want you to eat anything. When you are up people want to pull you down. Whether even when you don't, even when Saul, like we, 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 we went through on Friday night vigil, David didn't do anything to Saul. But Saul made every attempt to kill David. If it's, if it's not for God, David will never realize his destiny. David will never get to the station of divine abundance. 
That is why it is a battlefield. That is why God is described as the man of war. Abi, only Ologusi ni orukore. Mighty warrior, great in what? In battle. Who, who do you want to resemble? Do you know the reality? If you don't, if you are not well prepared, if you don't pass this test of warfare, <laughs> if you don't pass it, do you know what devil will do? Devil will steal your God's bless your God's blessing. It will steal your identity. It will give you. Don't you know? You, you, don't, you don't like to be described this year as that man who suddenly started a small business and because that is, he said, I know the plan I have for you. It is not to harm you. It is to lift you high. To be described, ah, one of my sisters gave a testimony to me this weekend and I was thanking God. After Baba called prayer on Friday, he said, it's me my Baba was talking to. He said, God has changed my story. Don't you know when you are being when people are using negative things to describe you? That is not your identity as a Christian. And this all said, Satan has come to kill, to steal, to destroy. If you don't engage every day in that battle, it will steal your blessing. It will steal your identity. It will steal your testimony. It will steal your family. And if you are not careful. Are you only talking of 2012? It will even steal your future. That's why you have to be ready. And uh, our, our, our weapon of warfare are not kind of, but mighty. You can't stay at home when we are calling prayer and you think any me will just be will just be toying with your life. You will think you are going to work. Which work are you going? I always tell people which work? People will say, you know, I, I did night. Which night did you do? Which night? Yes, Queen sitting there. When I used to be in Barnet Hospital, 72 hours. No sleep at all. Then when I come home, we were in Stanford Day. When I come home on Sunday morning, I'm the one that will be telling them, don't delay me, I'm going to church. Do you know why? Because I want God to take 72 hours non-sleep from me. If I didn't do that, I would still be doing my 72 hours. For that job that is stopping you from coming, you need to come and cry, to come and fight with the, with the weapon that man cannot understand. You need to use that weapon. You can't stay at home Monday to Sunday and you come on Sunday. And you t- and Satan will just be laughing. That's the truth, sir. You have, to tra- you have to pass the test of warfare. If you say you call yourself a Christian, it's better not like uh, Pastor Mother said when he was calling prayer. You know what he said to that church? In Ladosia, he said, You are neither hot nor cold. You see, because if you are hot, you'll be useful medically. If you are cold, we know you have problem. But to stay in the middle, halfway Christian, you are gone, man. That's the truth. You have to pay, you have to pass the warfare test. You have to pass the warfare test. Otherwise, Satan will waste you. My prayer this year, as we go. In year 2012, is that we will, pe- we will pass yeah. and we will not fail. Yeah. Which means all of us, uh, we can say that, but uh, you have to act it. Uh, James said, He said, uh, Show me your faith. He says, uh, Show me your work, and I will show you your faith. Don't just say amen, back it up with action. When we call prayer, come. Uh, Sister Shade was remarking at us on the school today. She was glad as a Sunday school teacher. Because uh, we said every worker should be here. We expect every deaconess to be here. We expect every elder to be here. We expect every minister of wife to be here. We expect every, every usher to be here. We expect every chorister to be here at night 30. We expect everybody to be here. So that there's no point complaining that church is not good. Which church is not good? Who are going to make it good? Have you, seen, have you ever worked in any organization in which the workers will say, our organization is not good. Who is going to make it good? You have to come and fight. This morning we came. A lot of people came. 
we thank God for a lot of people that came. And she was happy. A lot of people came and we fought. We fought. And Satan knows he has no place to hide in today's service. That is, you have to, as an individual, you have to pass that test. Because of my time. I will say, the, how many now? Six. Six. Let's just say one more. Out of many. Yeah? <laughs> you have to pass what I call the Lordship test. Do you know the Lordship test? The Lordship test. You remember Peter. What was Peter doing when Jesus met him? He was fishing. And Jesus said to him, Lower that net down. He said, Ah, who is this man? We have done it all night. He said, But at your word, I will do it. At your word. That's what I call the Lordship test. If you want to succeed this year, if you want to reach that true destination of divine abundance, you have to talk to God like Peter did. You have to listen to what God says, ask you to do. You know what God asked Peter to do doesn't make natural sense. Because usually the reason why fishermen, why they do things, why they do their business at night is because that is when the, that's when the fish. But Peter did something. He spoke to God. He didn't, he didn't, and you have to, how do you speak to God? Through his word. Every day. You listen to God every day. And, and the, the last of those three steps in the Lordship test is that you don't, not, you, you don't just speak to him. You don't just listen to him. But like Peter, you do what he asks you to do. He said, we have fished all night. We caught nothing. But at your word, I will do it. Shall we stand up? You want to tell the Lord, Lord, in this journey to divine abundance in this year 2012, Lord, make me a success. Let me pass all the tests that need passing. Don't let me be a failure. Come July 1st, let me have testimony of pass. Come December, let my home have testimony of pass. Come July, come December, let my life be a testimony that will show pass to divine abundance. Are you praying that prayer? Amen.